Yeah, varnish. Var oh, it's just strictly varnish. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. And then yourself for this? That's just mm -hmm. one coat of linseed oil, but then it'll have many coats of tongue oil. Okay, all right, fair enough. Many, <laughs> many, 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 many coats. So many basically, we just want to get crazy shine to it, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. And then a couple other options there. So as you can see, so you've got walnut oil, almond oil, and then what people typically would go through, which is mineral oil. Uh, next slide there. So the problem with oil from nuts and seeds. So allergies is one of the big ones, whether you think of it or not. Like allergies are one of those things that, well, especially nut-based allergies, are more and more prevalent today than they were before. And with people cutting into boards and things like that, you got to make sure that if you are using oil, it's something that could that won't make them have an allergic reaction. So that's definitely something that you got to really take care of and pay attention to. And then mineral oil. So with the younger generation, with the millennial generation, they are getting a little bit more into what's going into the products that they're consuming, but the products that they're using as well too. And mineral oil is petroleum-based, so it's a gasoline byproduct essentially that's getting used. And a few studies have shown that prolonged exposure, whether you're internally using it, whether you're using it in other applications, can end up messing with vitamins A, D, E, and K absorption within your body. It's not really a good thing. That's like baby oil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got it. Which is great for putting on babies. So that's a smart thing to do, right? <laughs> and then in adults over 60, it's caution for use for those with breathing problems. So if you're using mineral oil yourself, either internally or in constant applications for woodworking projects, it could end up messing with not only your intestines but also your lungs at the same time. Food oils, I kind of mentioned that briefly there, olive oil, walnut oil, those are ones that people typically turn to, but the issue though is that those oils are enough to rant it after time. So if you've ever used olive oil before on a cutting board and you've tried to smell it after six months or a year, it's probably smelling terrible if you haven't used it. And the reason why is because these all these oils go rancid. Next up there, beeswax. Show of hands, how many people have used beeswax before to finish any products? I'm going to pass this around as a sample there for you. Oh, shut up. Oh, I was like stealing from you, right? Sorry about that. All right, perfect. So the beeswax, the beeswax itself, yeah, if you want to, you can absolutely take a bite out of it. You know, might get a little bit tough on your teeth there, but so it's, it's actually kind of cool once you take a look. So a little bit of a place in history for beeswax. It's been used literally for hundreds of years as a transparent finish. I'm just going to throw this here for you. This is what I'm going to do up there. So the wax that we use is it's fairly unique, it's fairly different. So if you take a look as we kind of go through here, it's got a very, very beautiful yellow color to it. And if you've ever worked with beeswax before, you've probably seen yellow wax, you've probably seen a darker, almost brown type of wax as well too. As beeswax gets used over and over again in the hive, that's what leads it to having a darker and darker color. So the wax that we use is a single use, so it's only used single use cappings and it's collected without, without using <coughs> pesticides. So you're literally getting the highest quality and best quality wax available as well. Yeah, that's kind of push, go through here. I think I may like jump one or two slides ahead as well and say, oh, that's not the bees that we collected from. Next? <laughs> no, the next <laughs> All right, next up. So our beeswax, kind of flipping through here, harvested right here in Ontario. So we are a Canadian company, we're from Ontario. Shoot, yes? So a question for you. Yeah. Let me just replace the recorder with beeswax. Great. The other beeswax is more soft. What would be the difference between that and this? So that's a good question. With our wax is 100% pure beeswax. So depending on where you get the wax, there could be a carrier oil or something added to it, which means it's softer. But again, if that's something where it's a food based oil that's been added to it, it could potentially avoid rancid, especially if it's being used on a toilet seat. Since you're going to look like your own. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that might not be the best thing to do. But yeah, if you get a softer type of beeswax, then it's not a pure beeswax that's there. So if there's some sort of a carrier oil added to it, which you get. Which exactly, which creates a software. Yeah. And it could very well be the many mineral wax, or mineral oil that's used as a combination of yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, there's no pesticides used when harvesting the wax itself, and it uses a traditional method of extraction as well, too. So there's no chemicals based for any of the extraction process that we've got. It's actually kind of cool. The, the beehives will literally just pull them out, plop them into this giant wooden barrel, spins around, honey flies everywhere, and then we're just left with a pure hive after that which is then melted down, it's triple filtered, and that's what you're left with afterwards. So it's, it smells beautiful, it smells like honey, which is incredible, and it is food safe. 
Like I said, it's one-time use cathins, and that's where it gets its bright yellow color from, is because it is only used that single time. Um, what we've done, so this is actually from Robin Wayne back when I first came out about a year, year and a half or so ago. We ended up creating a natural wood wax. And the wood wax itself is a, it's actually kind of neat what it does. So I just want to show you guys. Now this is a kind of more, unfortunately it's a store-bought one, so I'm going to have to pick one up from one of you guys here. But I wanted to show you what it looks like before and after. I'm going to pass it around so you guys can look as well too. Get out of your way here. Okay. Okay, yeah, you definitely guys are going to have to take a look and pass it around a little bit. But one side of the cutting board has been treated with the wood wax, the other side hasn't. That was done about 48 hours ago. So when using the wax, all you do is apply it once, just using a cloth, it's really, really simple, and then give it 12 to 24 hours to sit, wipe it off, buff it off, whatever your preference is, and you're good to go. <laughs> okay. So wood wax ingredients, nice and simple. So we've got beeswax, renewable resource. Next up is cedar wood oil, and then finally we also use distilled coconut oil. So I know that I was talking about not using food oils in products because it's not something that you want to do. But with distilled coconut oil, it's essentially steam distilled. So what that means is coconut oil is broken up into what are called different types of triglycerides. So we've got medium chain and long chain. So when it's steam distilled, that long chain stuff gets separated, and that's where you get a harder type of coconut oil. But you're left with medium chain triglycerides, which are essentially like it's, it's a liquid type of coconut oil. But it doesn't go rancid. 8 to 10 year shelf life as well too, so if you're looking at olive oil, if you use those in applications typically, like, it could be comparison to coconut oil, olive oil is going to go rancid, liquid stuff is not. So, if you notice here as well, beeswax is drying, coconut oil is not. So you're using a mixture of drying and non-drying oils. And one of the big benefits of that is that the non-drying oils that we use, it seeps into the wood, which gives it that nice darker color that we're about to see. And then as the beeswax dries after that 24 to 48 hours or so letting it rest, then that's what seals in the wood itself. So it's not going to give you the same like tongue or linseed kind of gloss that you're going to get, but it's going to make sure that any type of cutting board or bowl, whatever the case may be, is still protected. No scent, like I said, extended 8 to 10 year shelf life, not going to go rancid. Advantages to the wood wax finish, so it's light water resistance as well too. So as you use it, as people wash the cutting board, soap and water, whatever the case may be, it stays on the cutting board itself. And this stuff lasts an extremely long time. It doesn't color the actual finish of the wood. So unlike some oils where it ends up discoloring or turning yellow, whatever the case may be, the wood wax selection brings up the vibrancy of the actual wood itself. Quick and easy to apply. Literally all you have to do is grab a rag, take a little bit out, rub it on the board, let it sit for a bit, wipe it off and you're set to go. And non-toxic and food safe. So the MCT, so the liquid coconut oil is food grade, the beeswax is also food grade as well as the cedar wood oil that's used for a light set. Free from mineral and metalics. If you guys are going to be marketing your business and your products to millennials and the younger generation as well too, they're extremely, like I said, like cognizant of what is going into their, into their bodies, but also onto the products that they're using. So using something that you can claim to get free from mineral and nut oil is another way you can market your products that you're potentially selling to customers.